Well, I really appreciate uh, Andy giving me the opportunity to speak with you for a couple of minutes. And what I'm going to be talking about is a little bit different from what other people have been uh, doing in this symposium. Is rather than talking about work that has already uh, been completed, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes teasing uh, some studies that are in progress uh, and that are going to be coming out within uh, the next year that might be of interest uh, to the folks in this room. Now, uh, I'm uh, a scholar at the National Academy of Sciences, now called the National Academies of Sciences and Engineering in Medicine. We took a more inclusive title a couple of years ago. And for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, the National Academies were actually established way back during President Lincoln's administration to uh, provide science advice to the federal government. And even way back then, uh, they had the insight to understand that if they really wanted independent advice, uh, they couldn't make us a part of the federal government because we would forever be beholden to them. So we are this sort of odd creature that was created by the federal government to give advice to the federal government, but we are not part of the federal government, but are instead an independent research organization. And the way we operate, in brief, is we form expert committees of, of volunteers uh, who work with staff uh, to produce National Academy's reports. Uh, as a result, we greatly benefit uh, from the expertise of uh, folks like you. Uh, Jack Gilbert, uh, for example, is a member of one of our committees. Uh, Carrie Kinney uh, was kind enough to be a presenter at a workshop that we had recently. Others of you have participated uh, as observers in uh, various more public events. So, as Andy also mentioned, uh, I am involved in uh, military and veterans health, and this symposium is actually a, a quite wonderful coincidence of my interests because I work in both indoor air uh, issues, indoor environment issues, and on military and veterans health issues. As part of uh, the Office of Military and Veterans Health, and we were created just at the beginning of this year, so there would be a single point of contact for our studies on military and veterans health issues. Those encompass areas like the health effects of service in the military, uh, how best to uh, use information that is collected on military populations to improve their health, and how to deliver health care services to military populations. Uh, the office also manages a number of databases that we've collected over the years uh, since World War II on various military populations, making those available to other uh, researchers. Uh, including the Air Force Health Study, that was the study of uh, the Vietnam veterans who were involved in spray missions. Uh, our twin registry, uh, which is tracking some uh, ever-diminishing uh, set of World War II uh, veteran twins to try to understand better the consequences of military service. So, on to microbiome-related research. Uh, as a lot of people know, uh, Joshua Lederberg is generally credited with coining the term microbiology as it relates to uh, the work that's being done here. And then he did that in 2001. I went back and looked, and the very first report that mentions it of ours is uh, a lecture that Dr. Lederberg uh, gave in 2002 at a workshop that we gave on viral disease uh, eradication. So we've been in the business for a while. And uh, over that time, we produced a rather large number of reports on the topic. And the, those have been produced by various parts of the academies that are involved in the earth and life sciences, in chemistry, in uh, lab management, in water, in toxicology, and uh, in my own health medicine uh, division. What I'd like to very briefly mention is four studies that are microbiome related that are going to be coming out this year and that we're very excited about and that we hope you 
might find to be useful as resources. Uh, those have to do with the chemistry of microbiomes, the use of animals and animal models in microbiome research, environmental and chemical interactions with the human microbiome, and microbiomes in the built environment. Now, the first of these, Chemistry and Microbiomes, was a seminar series that we held late last year, and that seminar series uh, comprised four different sessions, one on uh, surface and soil microbiome, one on the marine microbiome, a third on humans, and then a fourth sort of compilation uh, seminar that looked at how you could use the information that had been collected from these disparate uh, sets of research, combine them where there were opportunities for uh, collaboration, uh, further research, and what one uh, set of researchers might learn from the others in moving forward. Uh, a summary of those seminar presentations is just about to be published. Uh, I checked with the, the researcher involved with that, and she tells me they're just weeks away uh, from making that one public. The second was produced by our Institute of Laboratory Animal Research. And those are the folks within the National Academies who uh, try to help those who are most involved in animal research. They uh, conducted a workshop back in December where they were looking at the state of the art in uh, doing microbiome research using laboratory animals. They went on to also look at husbandry, animal care, and welfare animals uh, used in those experiments, especially in antibiotic mice uh, that have been mentioned uh, these past couple of days. Uh, and finally, to try to get a handle on research gaps, challenges, and opportunities uh, for further research in this field. This is another project that's very far along in the process, and we are going to be publishing the workshop proceedings on that effort in uh, the spring of this year, a little bit later. The third study is uh, a little bit uh, larger and broader, uh, rather than a, a workshop or seminar series. This is a full-blown National Academy of Sciences report, the kind where, if we're lucky, uh, we get some sort of mention in the papers saying the National Academy of Sciences today recommended that, or words to that effect. And this is a rather major effort that is being done uh, by my colleagues in the Board of Environmental Studies and Toxicology. It is looking specifically at environmental and chemical uh, interactions with the microbiome, trying to get a handle on uh, not only the state of art, but what the research strategy should be for better understanding a couple of primary issues in the field of different micro. Uh, microbial communities affect chemical absorption and metabolism. Uh, population variation might affect chemical uh, exposure in individuals. Uh, and finally, the effect of chemical exposures on microbiome uh, functions and how that relates to human health risks. So a number of areas that might have uh, interest uh, for DOD and DOD researchers. Uh, this is a uh, a major effort. Uh, they are still in the process of gathering information on the report, but they expect to be publishing the results of that effort in uh, the fall of this year. The final uh, effort, and the one I'm most fond of because I'm part of the research team on it, is one that is uh, funded uh, by Sloan and also by the Indoor Environments Division of the EPA, by NIEHS, uh, and by NASA. And that is specifically looking at microbiomes of the built environment. And what we were asked to do was a very broad overview of uh, literature, where we are, and to look at moving beyond simply what defines a bad uh, indoor environment to what might define a good indoor environment, which is a huge challenge. So our committee is trying to get a handle on what we know about the interactions between microbial communities, humans, and the environment, and its relation to indoor environment quality. Uh, to get a handle on uh, the opportunities and challenges for applying that information, and that's an important part of this. How do we take this information and turn it into something 
uh, that can be used. The title of the report is going to be Microbiomes in the Built Environment from Research to Application. So we're taking the application end of it very seriously uh, to the extent that the literature allows, of course. Uh, and finally, again, and this seems to be sort of a common theme in, in a lot of the work that we do, trying to get a handle on where the gaps are in the knowledge uh, base for this and where the research opportunities might lie. Uh, as soon as I get home uh, from uh, this symposium, uh, I have to sit down and take the comments uh, from our uh, expert committee members uh, who have been writing specifically on built environment issues uh, and take the final draft that was produced, incorporate those comments, and turn it into something that we'll send out to uh, our external reviewers with the intent that we are going to publish this report uh, the summer of this year. Uh, we are aiming to have it uh, available in June, so uh, it can be discussed at the Health and Buildings Conference uh, that will be taking place uh, in July in Poll. So, that's just a very brief overview uh, of these reports. Uh, we hope you might be able to find them uh, useful resources. If you care for further information, either on the reports or on the uh, Office of Military and Veterans Health, I have some information down here. I want to highlight the fact that all of our reports are available for free download uh, in PDF form. And moreover, and this might be useful, for other folks in this room. All of the open uh, sessions that we were talking about in uh, the seminars, the workshops, and the workshops that were held as part of the environmental chemical and built environment studies, all of those presentations uh, are available uh, online. Uh, they can be broadcast. The slides are all up there. And uh, I have learned of late that uh, for those of you who are going back to teach, that uh, professors are starting to use these as on-demand uh, guest lectures. So uh, a great way to uh, perhaps save a little bit of time <laughs> in your own work. And they uh, include some excellent lectures in the Built Environment series, uh, including uh, Brett Stevens' talk on uh, the state of the literature, which uh, he gave back in late spring uh, of last year, um, which uh, he based a, a paper on that I know has been cited at least once in one of the other talks uh, here, and it is a really excellent talk. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll thank you.